those of us working to bring restorative justice to Washtenaw County want to bring the restorative practice to our adult courts as well as to the juvenile court. We have seen the success of peacemaking circles in the juvenile court for the juveniles, their family, the victims, and the community, and at the same time reducing the incarceration rate of our youth. The same can be done for adults in our felony courts. It can be used at different stages in the process. For example, a case can be diverted to restorative justice system, restorative justice at the beginning, rather than continuing through any part of the traditional system, so that the offender will not have a record. The prosecutor and offender can make restorative justice part of a plea. A judge can assign restorative justice instead of a traditional sentence or as part of a person's sentence. When a person is arrested for a crime, they're usually held, uh, sometimes with bail, sometimes with not but they're held in a jail and they often have very little access to their family or uh, any other members of their community. And this actually creates a lot of harm and they'll probably lose their job. Uh, they'll probably lose their family because they can't have any contact with them. And there's no, uh, no way for them to make amends to anything that they might've done wrong. And even if they committed a crime, that doesn't mean that their family should suffer. That doesn't mean that we need to uh, destroy their financial opportunities for their future. No, what we need to do is look at why they committed that crime and find out how can we make it better? How can we heal the harm of this initial crime first? And, and then how can we make sure that it doesn't happen uh, for a second? But third, we also need to make sure that this person is, has the opportunities that anybody else does in our community to be able to be successful so that they aren't forced to look to other means such as criminal activity to just get by. When an offender is released from traditional punishment, if restorative justice has not yet, yet been done, it should be an option. When people are released from prison, chances are they've had very little support for a long time and they've got to start from scratch trying to find their way in a community that maybe doesn't even want them there. Um, if they're lucky, they've got some family support but uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of family members have drifted away or even died uh, while the person was incarcerated. Uh, finding a job with a criminal record is very difficult. Finding a place to live with a criminal record is difficult. And the fact that you don't have any money uh, because you haven't been working for a long time. All these factors contribute together to make uh, this cycle, this, this system of incarceration completely ineffective at preventing crime or, or making anybody safer. Uh, in fact, it contributes to the problem of crime by setting people up for failure, by setting people up so that they have uh, nothing going for them. And I'm not saying that crime is ever justified, but if you've got nothing going for you, if you can't get a job, uh, you can't find a place to live, nobody will help you, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to have to fend for yourself and it becomes you against the world and that's never good for either party. According to the Marshall Project, at least 35 states are currently using or trying to use restorative practices in their communities, in their courts and criminal justice system. Two of the most innovative and successful programs are Common Ground and Impact for Justice. These programs advocate for, six, for restorative justice as an alternative response to violent crimes, such as assault, robbery, and domestic abuse. Incarceration does not provide the safety to community or victims that is yearned for, but recognizing the interest and needs of those harmed, that is the victims, and giving them the opportunity to dialogue with those who have caused harm in a safe and supervised program bring healing, safety, and restoration. John Braithwaite, a professor and criminologist from Australia, states that restorative justice can reduce reoffending by violent offenders by as much as 40%. Victims of crimes are often excluded from communities as well. Again, we want to ignore people that make us confront the fact that there's a problem. Uh, and obviously that's not helpful to solving the problem and it can make even more harm for the people that have already suffered. We need to listen to these people. We need to understand what they've gone through. We need to take them seriously. Um, we need to 
be able to connect with their experience in a personal human way. And that allows us to start thinking about how to heal. Are there situations where restorative justice cannot or should not be done? Restorative justice must be voluntary between the offender and the people harmed, which can include family members in the community if they have been harmed. In some cases, surrogate victims have been used to stand in for a harmed person who is unavailable or doesn't want to participate. Surrogates often have been harmed in a similar way, but by someone else. Restorative justice requires some preparation of the parties and a trained facilitator. Restorative justice can be used and has been used in all types of crimes, including the most serious and violent. In fact, people with unhealed trauma from these types of crimes can benefit greatly emotionally from a restorative justice process. We in Washington County have the support of many in our community, including judges, law enforcement, and hopefully our prosecutor. Restorative practices can be used pre-trial, during trial, and at sentencing. We can work together to bring dialogue, victim satisfaction, and reduce incarceration with restorative practices in all of our courts, juvenile and, and adults, and misdemeanors and felonies. Currently, according to Daniel Sered, less than half of crimes are even reported to the police. Victims prefer nothing to everything our current criminal justice system offers. However, if restorative justice is available as an alternative, victims will see criminal justice as much more useful in repairing the harm that has been done to them. Restorative justice gives, an, gives us an opportunity to look at crime directly, to look at the harms that it, can, that it, that it uh, inflicts on people, and to start developing ways to deal with that harm and to move forward and to grow from it.